It's a funny thing uh, doing an intensive language learning project like this because here I am making a, a video where I'm talking about my progress once every two weeks or so and yet in the meantime every day doing uh, you know sometimes two to three hours of Italian uh, speaking listening and I'm going through so many different phases even within the space of what, a, a day or a week that when you actually sit down to record and to talk about your progress this, it's very difficult to just choose one thing to focus on. So if you ask me how the project was going, uh, my answer would depend very much on the week that you asked me. So we, uh, you know, wind the clock back three weeks, I've been on a massive high, I was speaking Italian every day for between 30 minutes to, to two hours. And the following week, I got sick and did almost nothing. And then uh, the week up to now, I have been traveling and I haven't been able to speak. So, you know, it's welcome to real life, right? So all those things are what you might call external struggles. They're things that happen outside your control that you have to live with. But what about the internal struggles? So things more to do with the language. Well, it's been just as interesting observing my own sort of personal ups and downs with, uh, with Italian over the last few weeks. Um, I well, sometimes wonder whether doing something this intensively, I'm experiencing like a microcosm. So I experience over the course of one week what you might normally experience over the course of say six months. Or I, I don't know, it's an interesting thing to think about. So directly after my first conversation, my five day conversations with, uh, with Martina, I was super happy, like I was pleased I was able to communicate. That was followed directly by a week of frustration. I'm exaggerating a bit, but basically realizing that I hadn't actually learned as much as I thought I had, and um, that I still had so much more left to learn. It's your classic case of heightened awareness, consapevolezza intensificata, one of my favorite expressions that I've learned in Italian. Uh, that was then followed by a week of like realizing that I was just speaking mostly with French and Spanish grammar or heavily influenced by that. And then finally ending up last week where I was just kind of enjoying myself because I realized I was able to have conversations and just really enjoy it and have a good time. So it's been a real kind of up and down roller coaster in a very short space of time. And then of course I get to the end of those three weeks of uh, inner turmoil and I look back on it. And I look at my conversation in Italian with Stefano from last week and I realized that actually my Italian has come on a, a long way and there was really no need to be worried at all. And of course there's a huge lesson in that. It's very common to have this honeymoon period where you've been, you know, you've been learning a new language for a while uh, and then the initial excitement sort of begins to wear off and you're left with the cold hard uh, reality of actually learning the thing. And uh, that is the point where it can become difficult to uh, to keep going, especially if you don't have a very fixed routine. The main thing that helped me, apart from the input that I've been getting every day, is that when I did start to have that, that sort of down week, the thing that saved me was I had already booked in all of my speaking sessions for the week, so that it didn't matter how I felt, didn't matter what mood I was in, I was speaking because it was in the diary, and that helped make sure that I got 10, 12 hours of speaking practice that week. Another big lesson there. So let's talk about grammar, because many of you guys have been asking me what I've been doing in order to sort out my, uh, my verb conjugations, which were a little bit all over the place in my first speaking video. Uh, the answer is two things. First of all, I've been going through a book of Italian verb drills. Now, I know that the idea of verb drills, for many of you, uh, make you just want to end it all. But the thing is that verb drills have got a very useful function, which is that they give you very direct feedback on where you're at with your grammar. You see, I haven't studied any grammar at all uh, during this project. Of course, a lot of it I've just picked up naturally from a lot of uh, listening and reading. But there's a, there's a limit to what you can get with that, I think. And you, there comes a point where you need to look more closely and in a more direct way at the different verb tenses and how you conjugate all these verbs in those tenses. And verb drills give you, tell you, you know, ex straight away what you do and what you don't know. So I spent a good few mornings working my way through this book of, of verb drills and just looking, at, basically comparing different tenses. So how do you, how do you s conjugate a certain verb in the two forms of the subjunctive? The, the, how does the conditional form itself? How do you, you know, all of, all of these things. I just got a very close comparative look at all of these verb tenses. Uh, and that gave me a, a bit of a framework, some structure to all of it. Uh, I didn't do very much of it, but what that meant is now when I go out to read and listen to Italian, I'm able to spot this stuff that I couldn't see before. There are very little things like the way that the, it, when you conjugate an AR verb in the future tense, the A changes to an E. So 
For example, instead of for, for the verb guardare, rather than saying guardaro, you say guardero. That's the kind of tiny little detail that you don't pick up uh, when you are listening and you might not quite understand what's going on uh, when you're reading. So a lot of this stuff is it's just basically given me a map of the way that the verbs work and that's been really, really handy. The second thing that's really helped with grammar has been flashcards. Now, flashcards, let me explain a little bit about how I use these because I don't really use the flashcards so much for their the kind of space repetition functionality but more for a way of kind of organizing information so I can get back to it and practice it when I want. So specifically what I've been doing is taking words and phrases which, I can, <laughs> which for me are very Italian or sentences and phrases that have very Italian grammar. I stick these into flashcard decks and I quite regularly review them, which helps me uh, embed these Italian phrases and ways of thinking, the unique elements of Italian into my mind. Uh, this is something I go into in quite a lot of detail in my Make Word Stick uh, guide. Uh, but uh, essentially what I'm doing is I, I'm, I'm sticking words and phrases in my, in my flashcards and then doing, uh, studying them in a kind of reverse way. So I, sh I show the English side first and then I have to uh, produce then the Italian side. Again, I don't do this a lot, maybe five, ten minutes a day, but it just helps to focus my attention right on, you know, like you've got a really sore muscle in your back and you just press on that muscle, you, you know all about it, right? That's, it's like what I'm doing with the Italian. I'm just taking the stuff that's not intuitive, that's not obvious to me, and just training that in particular. And that's what really helps me kind of push forward through things that might otherwise take me weeks or months to, to learn in a natural way. So those two things, the combination of those verb drills and a little bit of flashcards have been really pushing me forward. I have to say though, that stuff accounts for like maybe less than 5% of what I've been doing. Almost all of my progress has come straight up from, uh, from, my, from my input every day, all these hours of listening and reading, mostly listening. And of course, the more I speak, the more confident I get with speaking and the more I'm able to kind of feed through from what I'm learning. So looking forward then, uh, I've got my trip to Italy booked for the end of September. This is the, the three month point. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm going to reveal the details uh, in a future uh, video. Um, I got to say like, at first I was, in the beginning of this project, I was asking myself like how, how far can I get? What level uh, am I going to reach? But I think now the question for me, much more having just spent you know, the best part of two months of my life on this is uh, not so much how far can I get, but how much can I enjoy it? Because I've really rediscovered in many ways after the languages I've been learning over recent years, I've rediscovered what it means to kind of learn a language and be able to genuinely enjoy it and genuinely consume the content uh, because I, I love it. And that personally is just extremely uh, satisfying. And so that's, that's really where my, where my head is at at the moment. Many of you guys have also mentioned the kind of input-based methodology seems to be working. I've been amazed, really. It's, uh, it's been quite some experience so far. And of course, we're only halfway through, so I can't wait to see what happens by the end of month three. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back for another speaking video next week.